Well, some state lawmakers have concerns about the proposal to limit who gets the new minimum wage. One of those is State Representative Fentress Driscoll of Tampa, and she joins us now. Representative, thanks for coming back. Thank you for having me, Rob. Uh, Senator Brandis tells us that this uh, proposal to limit the minimum wage is his way to reduce unemployment among uh, people who are under 21 and ex-felons. What do you say about that? Well, what I say is that this is yet another example in a long history, a long list of examples, rather, of the legislature attempting to subvert the will of the voters. And so while my colleague, Senator Brandis, may be well-intended, I think that when the voters speak with such overwhelming support for a constitutional initiative, it is incumbent upon us to listen. And as I understand this piece of legislation, it actually would hurt uh, those employees who are 21 and or, or under the age of 21. It would hurt returning citizens or those who were formerly convicted of felons and actually having the, the opposite effect of, of what the voters were trying to do. You, uh, he, he says it would reduce unemployment among, uh, let's say, teenagers and returning citizens. Do you agree with that? I disagree with that, and particularly with respect to returning citizens. Look, it's hard enough for returning citizens to find employment, to get back on their feet. We're talking about, about people who have uh, paid their time, like they've done their time, they've paid their dues, and they deserve to have that second chance in life. That's what the law affords them. So what this legislation would do, it appears to me, is to further hamper their ability to build a life and to become productive members of society. Last summer, after the Black Lives Matter protests, uh, Governor DeSantis uh, suggested that there should be higher penalties on protests that turn violent or that protests that block streets. Uh, that legislation is up there in Tallahassee. What are your thoughts about it? Well, thank you even for the way that you phrased that question so artfully, because I think a lot of people miss that. This legislation, House Bill 1, was first teased back in August or September when uh, we were still having those protests after all of the civil unrest and the killings of unarmed Black people, including George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery. Uh, not, uh, it was filed after the Capitol riots in Washington, D.C., uh, on January 6th, but it was teased way back then. And so we know that there is a nexus between the Black Lives Matter protest and H -Bill, uh, HB1. And so it's problematic to me um, on that level because it says to people and their allies who were out there protesting against the historic injustices against Blacks in America, you know, we don't care. To me, it's the legislative equivalent of a knee on the neck. I think this bill is unconstitutional. Uh, for many reasons, we already have a constitutional right under the First Amendment to gather and have peaceful protests. And we also have many laws on the books that would take care of some of these, um, the, the problems, the alleged problems that they say this bill is trying to address. The Legislative Black Caucus this week came out with several proposals to reform the criminal justice system, or reform the police. You were part of that uh, press conference. Tell us uh, what the main ideas of this are. Yes, and so uh, last year, in the wake of all the, the protests and the unrest, the Florida Legislative Black Caucus sprang into action, and we started meeting to start thinking about what we could introduce in terms of policy, because we know that even though protests subside, there's still work to be done. And so I'm honored to have helped try to, to lead our efforts on uh, fair and just policing. A few of the items that we want to tackle, building more accountability and transparency by having a database that would track use of force incidents against officers, uh, and also track if an officer had been terminated uh, more than twice for cause, making it so that those officers can't hop around from agency to agency. We know that there's so many great law enforcement officers and they put their lives on the line every day. We just wanna make sure that we're able to capture and intervene when there are, there are those bad actors, those bad apples, if you will, who might get in there and try to spoil the culture and spoil the bunch. Um, we're also looking at establishing minimum standards for policies and procedures across all law enforcement agencies. Um, so really just, like I said, trying to build in that accountability and transparency, which hopefully will build more trust between uh, the law enforcement community and communities of color. Well, Representative Driscoll, thanks for coming back on Florida this week, and great to see you. Thanks for having me.